All right, so uh, this is a question I got um, from somebody in class today. I think it's probably worthwhile talking about. Um, you can read the question. Now, uh, the student came to me with question A done, which is draw the diagram. Um, they've calculated the angle that each rope was making with the ceiling, so I'm not going to go through that. They've also been able to determine the vertical component of the tension force in each rope because there was um, 400 newtons going down here and the vertical component is going to be that divided by two because um, the tension is being split equally between the two ropes. Uh, the part that we we're having trouble with is um, D, give the vectors for the tensions in the left and right rope respectively using I and J notation. The trick here is just to use some basic, really basic trig. Um, if, I, if I zoom in on uh, this triangle here, uh, I'm just going to redraw it just as a triangle um, like that with 245 newtons here um, and an angle there of 41.41. Um, and then the question just ends up being, okay, if there's 245 newtons in the J component, how many newtons in the I component? And now it's just a very, very basic like soccer toa. So you can treat those tensions in the I and the J just like you would lengths. Just be careful that you're not mixing and matching. It's either, it's either um, tensions or it's lengths. It's not both. So we can't, when I say that, we can't use the number four here because four is the length of the rope, whereas 245 newtons is the, is the force, is the tension in the rope. Okay, so um, just some basic trig. I won't even bore you with it. I'll just write down the answer. This is 277.80. Now be really, really careful here. Um, 277.80 is uh, the magnitude of the tension. So I can write, uh, for instance, 277.8 newtons there but um, be careful um, the, uh, actually tension is non-directional so we can say the tension is 277.8 newtons now if we're going to write um, our vectors and we will now so vector a is negative 277.8 in the i component and uh, 245 in the j component and vector B is going to be equal to positive 277.8 in the I component, 245 in the J component. Now, I think if I look at the answers, um, it gives 278. So they're just doing some rounding there. Um, or I've done some rounding when I did that angle of 41.41. But that's, that's, that's close enough. Um, now, if I just continue here, uh, calculate the magnitude of the tension in each rope. Um, so you can do that um, if you know the tension here and you know the tension here. You can essentially use um, Pythagoras. You can just do 245 squared, 277.8 squared, find the square root of that, and you'll get your tension in that rope here. Um, so there, I'm not going to do the working for Pythagoras. It's just just the newtons squared, newtons squared. Um, now, there would have been another way to do it. Uh, I've done a little bit of working here. Um, now, let's say that you weren't being asked first to find the I components. That was the I component. Um, I've done the working here to find the magnitude, uh, that same number, 370.4, um, just using like a sign rule kind of idea. Um, I've just, the trick here was to move the vectors, the two A and B vectors, um, so that I could get a triangle of forces, muck around with that. So you can take a look at the working there and connect it to the question, but there's basically what I've done there. Um, now this last question, uh, the speaker is to be raised by increasing the separation points, A and B, but the rope will break if the tension exceeds 4,000 newtons. Um, find the maximum possible separation between A and B. Little question. I've never attempted something quite like it, but think about what happens as we um, shift these ropes apart. Uh, if I let's shift my ropes apart very extremely, so they've been shifted much, much further apart. I don't know how far apart they've been shifted, um, but that doesn't matter to me. I don't think, not yet. Um, 
I have my weight here that is still exerting 490 newtons. And I have my vectors here, my like J components of those vectors that are still exactly 245 newtons. Now, the thing that's changing is um, this force, force here. And when that force is 4,000 newtons, and when that force there is uh, 4,000 newtons, uh, that's when it's going to that's when it's going to break. Now, the angle that angle is going to have something to do with it as well. If I can find that angle when it breaks, uh, I'm in business. So it's really just if you zoom in on this, it's really just a trig question. Um, so I want to know that angle there, which is also that angle there. Um, so let's figure this out. It's a, a opposite over hypotenuse. So sine theta equals uh, 245 over 4,000. And we should be able to come up with a theta value there. All right, so I'm getting a theta answer there of 3.5116 degrees. Uh, now that's that's working for me because like it, that's very far apart now. Okay, now that I have an angle calculated from my force vectors, I just need to work need to switch my thinking from force to length because the rope, now I'm going to work in green here, uh, I'm going to work in green here. The rope is four meters long and will always be four meters long. Um, the angle is 3.5116, that's when it's going to break. Uh, if I know this length, I also know that length which is half of the separation of the ropes. That's the full separation of the ropes. That's half of the separation of the ropes. So using a little more trig, um, this time it's uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos 3.5116 um, value of 3.992. That's really, really close. You can imagine that this, those ropes are very, very far apart now. If I multiply that by 2 times 2 uh, equals 7.9849 metres. I check my answer. Let's see how I did here. Maximum separation, 8 metres. Uh, I'm within a rounding error there. Um, again, I've been through about five steps and I keep rounding to two decimal places. So it's not surprising that I'm out here by a little bit, but um, that's my working. Okay, so if you can follow this, let's be careful. At the end here, you really need to label things and say, what was I doing here? What was I doing here? What am I doing here? And what am I doing here? So it's fine to sort of have a little bit of a think and a play while you're doing these questions, but make sure you label everything. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Um, okay, that's a key takeaway here, I think, from this whole video, is you can think in Newtons, and you can do Pythagoras and sine and cosine and all the rest of it in Newtons. You can think in lengths, but you can't do both at the same 